it works for me. Yeah, the me is the is the accent, yeah, because uh, you know, obviously, you could have the greatest program if the person doesn't want to do it. It doesn't matter. So in a way, we play the biggest role. If you're not interested in the solution, yeah. it'll be like it's fucking from another world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which lends itself to realize what role we really play. Like we give everything the meaning it has and we play a much bigger role uh, than the head could even think about. Yeah, but the head likes to be a very big thing in a small pond, so to speak, but we're actually quite huge. Huge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you have a, have you ever heard Course of Miracles, anything? Nothing like that. So it just showed up today. Great. You know a little bit about non-duality? Are you going to pin it on Tyler? Yeah, I don't want to oh, yes, I think I remember. Yeah, so uh, we'll go into it, but it's a simple presentation. Uh, you know, there's not like non-Buddhism or non-Catholic, you know, Catholicism or non-Islam, yeah? But there is something called non-duality, which is quite interesting. So I believe the non-duality came as a response here to a lot of misunderstanding. And one of the biggest misunderstandings is that we're in a, an event that has a dualistic uh, program in a way. Yeah. So if there's contraction, there's going to be expansion. If you go far, you're going to get drawn back. Yes, it's like high tide, low tide. There's one uh, action and there's a reaction to that. Yeah. So you have one thing, like a lot of people have a story that they're moving towards something, but in a, in a sense, they're moving away from something. So there's something in them that they don't want to deal with. So now they're moving toward other things. Yeah? So there's this thing. Hold on, honey, do you need help? Nor could you help uh, me? <laughs> Maria, she's in a giant chair. And you caught too big of a fish, honey. Yeah. Okay, I just don't want to hit everything. It's a big fish. Oh, there he is. They're right there. Right next to the other one. No, we did the other one. We got to get a seat for Rich. Yeah, we have a live meeting today in a up at our friend's house in Auburn in Northern California. And Nora went with you? Nora's here. No, he didn't come with us. He just showed up. He's here. Oh, wow. Mia's here. Oh, we got a guest. Hi, Mike Z. Hi, Nora. How are you? Hi, all. I think Maria got surprised by the, the people that have shown up. She's uh, a little. She's, where's Mia? The, the her world of control has been shooken up. She's running around now yeah. looking for. Where's chair. Mia? Mia's right there. How can you miss her? Right there. Hi, house. Mia. Hi, Mia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good to see you. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah. She was a bumper. She'd have a lot of stickers on. Adelaide. Fucking San Diego, calls bad, fucking just driving everywhere. Yeah. Well, we'll start again, but yeah, it's just the this idea isn't a thing in of itself. It's a negation of things. Yeah. Because the premise is that which you're looking for is already available. Yeah, so you're not going to arrive at some magical, mystical place. Yeah, you are there already. Something you may do may trigger that, but it's going to be right where you are. Yeah, when you get to the magical, mystical place, for the place to be magical and mystical, you've got to be there, so to speak. Yeah, so you're you're the you're it, so to speak. And so, the head developed into this point of view that you and I pictured as a body that the body means we're separate long-lasted independent things yeah so i see you and it's not look doesn't look like this body so there's a separation that becomes the norm yeah and then the head develops around that separation of being the long-lasting independent separate entity and 
the living of life, which is seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, yeah, doing, thinking, is now attributed to this long lasting independent separate entity. So we now believe the thoughts that we're noticing are our thoughts somehow, and, and we're the one that's thinking them. Yeah. So we get a sense of being a, the doer of a lot of shit that we haven't done. Yeah. So when you have a feeling, the feeling is claimed by this activity to imply the feeler. And now you become in the story a feeler, a thinker, a doer, a haver. Yeah. And now the things that you've sort of owned start owning you. So now a thought that held a your thought can ruin your day. Yeah. Now your thought won't ruin my day unless I hold it as my thought. Then it could possibly ruin my day. Yeah. So it's not the thought, it's the sense of ownership. So this sense of ownership was going on without much suspicion. And then some message came up, which is called non-duality. So basically the non-duality is implying that the greatest mystery as one master said, come on, yeah, more chairs. We haven't started, this is just a warm up. So, yeah. So the greatest mystery is reality wanting to attain reality. So this is the assumption, the message of non-duality based on, yeah? That you are already that which you're looking for, yeah? So it would make, it, he says, the greatest mystery being ourselves reality, reality wanting to attain reality. So what could trigger a, de a desire or a drive to want to attain reality? there must be a mistaken identity of the reality. Yeah? Why would reality ever want to attain itself? It would already be itself, yes? So instead of the reality being noticed, it's called Paul. So now Paul is having a hard time, let's say, being Paul, and it's checked out drugs, checked out this, checked out that. It comes to this last house on the left, and it's spirituality, and now it wants to become a better Paul or transcend Paul or merge with the huge whatever, yeah? And this, this activity is truly could be described as uh, moving chairs on the Titanic, basically, because we're all gonna sing. Well, thank you. Yeah, so, so this activity is what non-duality uh, negates, yeah? So basically, we're in this activity, maybe without knowing it, that I'm taking myself to be a thing that is the thinker of the thoughts, the feeler of the feelings, the doer of all the actions, yeah? And I'm moving from there, but AKA, it's actually reality, and I'm looking for reality, yeah? And so it was, the message of non-duality is, is has the hopes of correcting that se that simple mistake, yeah? So instead of describing what reality is, it describes what we're not, yeah? So it describes thinking, it, and it's thinking without the thinker. It describes feeling without the feeler. It describes doing without the doer, yeah? And it says that for the doer to arise, that it's essential there's doing, but for doing to occur, there's no need for a doer, yeah? So we've been living in an in a interpretation where the emphasis has been on being the doer instead of the doing, the feeler instead of the feeling, yeah? The thinker instead of the thinking, yeah? And so life is ing. It's thinking, feeling, seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, and yet the head, translates that to imply all the seeing implies there's a seer and you're the seer and when it thinks about you as the seer it pictures you as a body yeah and the body obviously is a huge representation of separation because not every body looks the same does it because the same space that same energy that's seeing in all of us has no differences. It doesn't have different qualities. You can't say it's seven feet tall and the other one's five feet tall. It doesn't have anything to di differentiate itself. So this, what's seeing through all of us, what's hearing through all of us, what's tasting and touching and feeling and 
and propelling action in all of us is the exact energy, the same energy, but how it's appearing to the head is that it's uniquely different. And so if you've ever run into alcoholism or addiction of any sort, the underlying condition is what grows and gets strengthened is a terminal sense of uniqueness. Yeah. So now this sense of what we all are, which is shared, is now seen as incredibly unique. So no one thinks like I do. No one feels like I do. No one's done the heinous things that I have done. And suddenly you live in an almost like a cocoon, yes, where all you're listening to is that which you're not. Tell, tell yourself, tell you about what you're not, yeah? So you lose the sense of what we are by the act of being identified as what we're not. To such a point, if you keep describing what you are, it's going to be neutered by the receiving of it by what you're not, yeah? So you are not open and ready and available for a clear description of you because what's interpreting your life is not you. It's this activity, this mental activity, yeah? So the mental activity gets the message and neuters it, yeah? So finally, they had enough and they came up with something and it was called non-duality, yeah? So the duality of you as the subject and then all the other objects and you as the doer and all the doing and you as the feeler as all, and all the feeling, that's dualism, yes? There's feeling and a feeler, that's duality. It says that's, that's not true, that's all. It negates the non-duality and what gets emphasized is what you are. And that is actually what they believe you've been looking for all along, yeah? So by negating the one that's looking, you get the sense of being the looking, yeah? By negating the sense of being the looker, you get the sense of that which is looking. Yeah, let's call it spirit or whatever. It doesn't matter. All that matters is it's not what you think it is. Yeah. And so when you lose interest in thoughts, it's based on you've lost interest in the idea of being the thinker. Yeah. I don't have any, almost no interest in your thoughts because it's not mine. Yeah. Yet the same thoughts I could be completely obsessed over because the held as my thoughts. Yeah. This is the bondage of this idea of self. Yeah, this the bondage of being the unique, terminally different doer, thinker, feeler, taster, and toucher that people are trying to get some sense of connection or community or something to try to override this this weather front kind of pang of feeling like sort of empty. Yeah. That thing that wants to heal is the irritant, it's the disease. Yeah. So instead of being had by the disease, you see that, that you've had a disease and therefore there's a loss of interest in that disease because how the disease has used is talking to you as you all day. Yeah. You're listening to, doesn't it, if you're come, come, coming from recovery, you know, and let's say on some level, you realize you got to stop. And then the head is talking to you as if you're something other than it, because it's trying to convince you to do something that you know is not right. It's not going to work for you. And it's trying to convince you to have a drink. Yeah. And it wants to lead you to a point called fuck it, where you'll say fuck it. And then you're apt to do almost anything. Yeah. It's not talking. It's talking as you, but it's talking to you. What is that you the head is talking to? You don't see a big ticker tape of your thoughts outside for other people to see, it's you're hearing them all day, yeah? You're hearing the thoughts. If they were about you, you'd be thinking completely about other things. But there's all so many thoughts about you because you're not that, that which is being thought about. It's trying to convince us we're that which it's thinking about all fucking day. And then we start living based on its idea. And then we start feeling fucking lacking. And it drives us to drink for some people. Some people it drives to constantly look for spiritual relief. Yeah. And it's like the newest amazing thing. I have a woman I really like. I've known her for 30 years. She's been a seeker for 30 years. She, 
she's met 300 amazing things and they only lead to another amazing thing. There's never a fucking an outgrowing. There's never an arrival. It's always moving on to the next amazing thing. Yeah, this is different. It disarms all that. Yeah, in my case, I thought there was a noble calling, the spiritual calling, and it was quite different than everything else. It ain't. It's another form of addiction or can be, which is the self is just ideating itself, looking for an, another idea of itself called God. Yeah. And in the pursuit of God, you're going to be the star of the whole pursuit of God. The self, the self is going to be emphasized. You'll have no time for other people. You're too busy. You know, I've been called. I have a fucking purpose and you know, like no one else has. This is obsession with self. Yeah. It breeds addiction. It can be addicted on, you know, people, look at what happens now. It's incredible. People want to move into neighborhood communities that are built, built on Star Wars. Star Wars. They want to wear outfits, the things looking at it, have a little kindergarten and then great, just Star Wars, anything. We want to identify with. We're just fucking looking for something. I have, we got this fiat. And now people who have fiats look at me or drive it like this. I'm now in the fiat club because I have a fiat. It's insane. It's insane. They're just trying to, you know, you know, probably here, Quicksilver, Billabong, you know, identity, identity, identity. It's just like we're we're like an adhesion waiting to just glue on something. Yeah, the head is so bereft of any fucking sense of depth. It'll fucking grab anything yes and it's not going to stop it's insidious if you feed it it gets worse yeah so there's a message called non-duality what does it mean non means not duality means two it's simple it is not a message of oneness it's a message of not two-ness yeah because it has great faith in itself, which is it knows what you are. Let's say we'll call it the oneness. There doesn't need to be a huge advertisement about it. Just recognize what you're not and you're gonna find out what you are, yeah? And you'll realize all the time you were trying to find out what you are from what you're not was a problem, yeah? So you finally turn that, that light that's been searching and being used on this and see if it's so. See, are you the thinker of the thoughts? I had a complete example. If you're in recovery, it's so freaking obvious. You go in there. When I went in, I didn't even know it. I was in a thick terminal uniqueness, truly. Went to meetings. I, no one could have my thoughts or feelings or done the shit I did. Suddenly, I listened for three months. People share their thoughts, their feelings, and what they did under this influence and i only could come to two conclusions how did these people get my thoughts or they're not my thoughts yes i was licking, listening to a stock version of active addiction yeah with a little unique twist called paul yeah but anyone who ever dealt with an addict when they dealt with me they dealt with the addict not paul paul was so fucking far gone yeah yet paul was was denying and getting upset about all the information coming at the attic because, wait a minute, you're talking to Paul. No, they weren't. I spent two years in a program. And, you know, when I left, I had to begrudgingly admit they look, my life looked better than with them running it than with, with me running it because they never saw me as Paul. They saw me as what I was actually appearing as, which was a fucking down and out addict. And when they treated me as that addict, I got fucking sober and my life felt better. As soon as I split, Paul took over again. And then I went on a 10 month run and got washed up not far from here, really in Calistoga. Ended up in a trailer park, sitting in front, in front of a guy I didn't know, came out of a blackout, which is like parachuting behind enemy lines, just came out where I am, what am I doing? I'm seeing gliders landing. It was fucking, I was, what? Drinking a rug, ate vodka. And then life just intervened, finally. Something just came down, shut the head off, which I thought was impossible. And then it was a clear screen. It was probably between gulps too. 
because I saw the guy. I said, this guy's a fucking bum. And then he was looking back at me like I was a bum. Yeah. And it was like a gulp between the royal gate passing it on. Boom. Life just intervened. The, the, the screen went blank and there was like a CNN news flash. No story, just the news flash. I'm fucked. Yeah. And that was the condition I'd been in for two, about 10 months. But it was news to me. It broke through the little propaganda station of Paul, went somewhere, and I knew my goose was cooked completely. And then the next thing it said, you're not managerial quality. Yep, that was it, period, whack. All these other thoughts start coming in. I would have never thought. I called up the place I had split 10 months ago, asked them if I could come back. They'd been getting my newsletter. They said, no, you can't come back got to wait a month i couldn't wait a month I, I knew it was terminal and then i ended up to get a place to stay in the city i had to make a deal that i would go to a recovery meeting just to be able to sleep at her house and when i i went into that recovery meeting and i've been 35 years later and that thing that was the most influential aspect of my life this the thought like drilling into me all fucking day to lead me to that drink or lead me to another one and the, really the drugs, the narcotics had been lifted and I've never had a strong feeling or thought about drinking or using ever since. I mean, it's a living miracle, but that miracle would have died on the vine unless I was introduced to a way of life. And I was, I was introduced to recovery and that's allowed that miracle to extend for 35 years. But what I was shown is I'm not that. That which has defeated me was not me. And that foreignness of that activity in the head, seeing it as foreign was the possibility of being free from it. And then it told me why I could never be free before because I was trying to be free as it. That which I wanted to escape, I wanted to escape as, not from, yeah? Tiny little mistake, but when it, everything else is based on it over and over and over again, it creates a huge chasm, yes? And so finally the correction happened and I stopped calling these manifestations of this foreign pathogen or parasite mine. And I started to get some relief, like stable relief without lifting any fucking weights or doing anything. It's actually less doing. It was a very disarming meaning, a message. And then it led me to this message of non-duality, which described exactly what I had felt. Yeah. It told me that that which has been talking to you isn't you, Paul. It's manufactured by the head. You're getting slipped an in interpretation of life and losing the living of it. Yeah. Basically, it didn't happen all at once. It was a transfer, but the transfer when the sense of self arises in you, it says you already are one. Yeah. So when now the doing of whatever you did today in just a habitual way, the head just claims it. And then what it implies is that you are the doer, but now you're the historical doer. The doing that gets claimed right now infers that you've been the doer of tons of other shit. It just just adds weight, weight and weight. And I humbly believe you're never going to get out of it as it, yeah? The freedom isn't for you, it's from you. Yeah. And so that's what happened. I started following this shit. I ended up uh, What can I say? The proof is in the pudding, yeah? If you try something, in my view, what's happened is I heard this message and I've never had the last answer in this life. Sobriety wasn't the last answer. S sobriety allowed me to see the underlying causes and conditions, which is this ide ideation of self, really. Yeah. But this has been the last answer, which is an incredible answer. Yeah. Because it took away any need to look for any more answers concerning this mystical, metaphysical, what's going on, who am I? I've lost all interest in all of that. And I've been freed from the need to be liberated. Yeah? Because that which needs to be liberated is not you. 
You want to be liberated from that, and that's your essential, essential nature. You're not it, yeah? You don't have to become not it. You're not it. That's the beauty of non-duality. The beauty of non-duality says, bro, you're here. You got to get there. It says you're not where you think you are, and you're already here. It cuts out all the traveling. You basically see what you're not, and you find out what you are, and what you are is like resonates or rings these cryptic statements of non-duality, which is the seeker is the sort. Yeah, the seeker is the sort. When there's a sort and a seeker, that's duality. Yeah. Negating of that, the seeker is the sort, compresses time and space. You are what you're looking for right now. So this not going to work. You've, you're that that is looking for what you're looking for. Yeah? You're already that. Yeah? You can't get it. That's the beauty of it. You're so it, you can't get it. This is what people get flipped out about, but it's the greatest hallelujah of this message. You cannot get it. Yeah, because you are it. Yeah, you can't experience. People come and I'm having a non-dual experience. No, you're not. There's no non-dual experience. There's dualistic experience. An experience is there's something that happens and there's something that seems to happen too. That's an experience. Yeah, that's available, but that's not you. This is something other than an experience or a place you arrive at. When you arrive at this message, it tells you on having never left. Yeah. When it fi when you finally seemingly you arrive, it tells you nothing's ever happened. Nothing that you thought changed this ever changed it. Nothing. Not it's a, oh, but there's an there's no exception. There's no, you remember that time you should have gave me your mother money. No, that hasn't disqualified you. You're it. Yeah. Not as what you're thinking yourself to be, not as what you see yourself to be in the mirror, yeah, but as what we truly are. So is it a great master, Huang Po, from like 1200s, a Chinese Zen master, and he says something very beautiful. He says, whatever can be perceived cannot be perceiving. Yeah, so you look right now, I see, yeah, hey, friend, how are you? I see, 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 but none of that I'm what I'm seeing is what's perceiving. And same thing, you're perceiving this, this is not the perceiving. Yeah, so whatever can be perceived cannot be perceiving. Yeah, so if you go into your head, the head has the exact opposite message that it repeats ad nauseum, which is what you can be perceived is what's perceiving. You believe you're the one that's conscious. You're pictured as a body, and the body is you, and you are conscious. That's not true. Yeah, Consciousness is moving through. It's like no matter how many notes are played through the flute, the flute isn't playing the notes. Yes? The flute is just a flute. It has some holes. It needs wind. It needs breath. Something has to blow through it to, to give it, it the life of the flute. Other than before then, it's just what? Whatever you give it a meaning for, yeah? But once suddenly the breath comes through, then it's the flute. So that which is seeing is not the eyes. Yeah? If I got killed and nothing happened to the head, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be seeing a thing. But if you took that eye out and put it in a live body, it would see. It would facilitate seeing. It's not the eye, obviously. The eye is like the camera, but the light needs to go through the camera. This is what we feel. And the thing is, you may feel it, but you don't think it. The head does not get it. The head believes it's the one. Yeah. And it's a jealous one. Yeah. So the head, you can, you can see it. If you ever been up longer than you wanted to be up, yeah, if you ever done like I used to do 10 day cocaine retreats, very fucking intense. I recommend that more than any other retreat. You'll see more shit that you're avoiding at all costs than ever. Seriously, if you live through a 10 day coke retreat fuck, and you live to you know, tell about it, you're gonna learn a lot. <laughs> you're gonna see the 
the beast from head to toe because it's going to reveal itself, going to come out. Yeah. So, so if you stayed up a little too long and the head starts cooking, yeah, the head is where this whole uh, misrepresentation rests. Yeah. So, is there seeing? Is there hearing? Is there feeling? Is there tasting? Is there touching right now? Do I go, I want to touch, I just feel it, right? Yeah, I'm hearing this. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't not, did not set out in this day to hear chimes. I'm in a situation where there's chimes, I'm hearing it, yeah? Pure hearing chimes. There's no, what happens? So here, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, thinking. These are going on, yeah? Seemingly without our say. When you wake up in the morning, you don't have to commit to seeing it. Eh? So you can almost feel the seeing on the, you know, on the other side of the, the uh, eye thing. And as soon as you open up, there you go. It's not like I don't go to a seeing class during the day. I don't go to a hearing class. I've got to hear. I listen to like spiritual fucking songs. Yeah. There's hearing, seeing, feeling, tasting, touching. Yes, we all agree with that. All right. What happens? When they're seeing, the head comes up, claims the seeing to imply the seer. Yeah. So now, just like when this is how what ruins the beauty of a contemporary sunset is you believe you've been the seer of many sunsets. And then you compare sunsets and say, hey, this ain't that fucking good. Yeah. Or it's just like the difference between you and a Labrador. Yeah you would be thinking, I've thrown this ball 50 fucking times. I'm fucking over this. The Labrador doesn't see it that way. You could throw it for 800 times. It's gonna, and it's going to be as happy as the first as the last time. It will be almost dead. We have one. We have a flat back retriever. It looks like it's, it's overheated, but it will not stop. because it's a, <laughs> But it's just fucking full on us. Oh, I've done it five times. Oh, I've done this before. Yes. So something arises and claims the action. So just you seeing and hearing, seeing and hearing, the head arises, claims the action to imply a seer and a hearer. Yeah. So here's the attention and interest on the seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. And now this interest and attention are, is being moved from the seeing and the hearing and the feeling and the tasting to the seer, the hearer, the feeler, the taster. Maybe it was a slow transition but it's only in one direction. It's moving from the living of life to the interpretation of life, yeah? And as it's moving, it seems to forget the sense of living and it just pictures you were the one that was living anyway. So this is all about you now and you were the one that was doing that and this is how it's going, yeah? So more and more seeing, forgotten, seer, emphasized. Hearing, ah, fuck it, hearer, yeah? Thinking, thinker. Taster, taster, you know, tasting, taster, doing for sure, doer. Yeah. And not only, and this is the, this is the trick. It's like a magic trick. And one of the main ingredients is time. Yeah. So here's a doing right now. So let's say there's a noticing I'm doing this. I'm putting my finger on here. You can watch the head claim, oh, it's pictures Paul to be the one that's doing it. Yeah. It seems innocent nothing and then when it pictures paul it pictures paul as a historical doer in other words under the claiming of the doing paul has thousands of doings that i've been the doer of and the stubbornness of this belief will override your own experience like when you've been up for a few days on coke or something like that you are very clear you're being used for transportation you're not choosing shit you're just going here compelled to do this, compelled to do that. I mean, you're driven, compelled. You're not sitting there making the choice of the day. You're being used for transportation. It's so extreme. So here you go. So here's this doing, gets claimed, but the doer gets established. Yeah. And so here, you're out there using drugs. You've been up for seven days. You realize you're run out. You're with other people. You suddenly look around and then you look at the floor, the rug, and you think there must be cocaine on there down in the floor. 
And then slowly you put whatever you had down and you just get on all fours and you start looking for like imaginary Coke. <laughs> you chose to do that. Give me a fucking break. Did you do that? Were you the doer of that? Have I done that for th after 35 years? No. Have I gotten close? No. I don't even look for money in the couch. You know, I wasn't picking up lint. And actually, I actually shot once. We went to a heavy metal fucking three day thing to meet some dude in Oakland. And I'm not, it wasn't into heavy metal. Bought the opium, supposedly, went back to where we lived, shot the opium up. Uh, didn't, we didn't, I didn't feel much, but we were trying to talk ourselves into, hey, you feeling anything? I think so. I think so. Our, my girlfriend comes in the room and says, who has the incense? And we go, what? And we're thinking it's incense. We got to be sure we shoot it up again. Do you think someone chooses to do that? Give me a fucking break. I know, I know addicts from fucking Africa. I know addicts from Europe. I know addicts from the North Pole. I know addicts from the South Pole. They all do the same shit. Yeah. Thousands of different vehicles end up at the same parking spaces. You've got to see something's up. Yeah. This idea of all of this shit is yours, especially if it's a burden. If you're walking around completely occupied with yourself, I mean, is drinking going to be the solution? Probably not. It was for me in the beginning, and then I end up the type of person I was. I started to drink, which was an honest move because I was quite uncomfortable. I wanted some relief. But as soon as I drank, I found out I had magnetic appeal to people in uniform. I started fucking police entered my life. Yeah. But I found out over years that the, the type I was, which is shared by many, what is I'm willing to pay any consequence tomorrow not to feel uncomfortable now. This is, wasn't a unique phenomena. I've met thousands of me, thousands of me. Yeah. Something has taken us over. And what allows these things to take us over is we're in a state of manufactured consent. The head is a stock version. It does the exact same thing in all of us. When it is brought into contact with life through us, we're the living of life. It claims that contact to imply there's a you. And now the verbing of life gets underemphasized. And then the noun of life, meaning you, it's your life. And it's like someone came here today. I'm going to eat my food. I'm going to take my shower. Is it really your shower? You're taking a shower. I'm going to get my shower, my food, my this. Yes, this is a sense of ownership. It's like, you know, my hair got longer and I hadn't been in New York. And I went to do a talk there. And a guy who knew me said, hey, you're growing your hair. And I said, yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Hey, it looks pretty good. And he was balding. I'm going, man, you're not doing fucking too good of a job. He said, we get together every week and grow our hair, about 12 of us, from 9 to 11 on Saturday. Come on. We, I've added a half an inch and shit like that. And you can go on. Oh, these are my shampoos, pride. I don't do anything but cut it. I don't cut it. Yeah. I have nothing to fucking to do with the hair growing. This is the whole thing. You don't have anything truly to do with the thinking. You're not the thinker. They're not yours. You see, I had it so rudely obvious in AA because thousands of people seem to have my thoughts. So the conclusion was, how did they get them or they're not mine? And then when I saw them as not mine, the first way I dealt with it was their alcoholic thoughts. And I had relief. A lot of the thoughts that would drive me crazy suddenly lost the ability to drive me crazy. So the ability to drive me crazy wasn't in the thought. It was for me. The owning of the thought gave it the possibility of owning my day. What? Yeah. And so these things were just revealed over and over. And the best way to capture the expression of all of it was non-duality. Got introduced to this message and it just clicked because it explained and described exactly what I had lived under, the tyranny of self in a way, and then the relief from the tyranny of self. Yeah. But see, I saw even in the relief of the tyranny of self, self could be there because it's so tricky 
Whatever you're doing, it thinks you're the doer of. It could be spiritual fucking practices or shooting drums. It's going to claim whatever is going on to imply it's you. And that's the bondage of self. The drug isn't the bonding agents. It's the bondage of self. It's the mental ideation or addiction to this idea of you. Yeah. And it can't build enough of you. So it claims the doing and pictures you as the doer. It claims the seeing and pictures you as the seer. So it claims all of the living to say it's you as this, as this noun, and at the expense of the verb. Yeah. And it's just a simple thing. Tell the truth about it or not. Just see it. This is this is not another draft. I don't care if people come back. I don't. I don't want to have, you know, I don't want to know them, everyone, personally. I just like to see you travel lighter. Yeah. And if someone's on their 35th retreat, unless they love fucking retreats, something's wrong. If it hasn't worked by then, it ain't going to work. Yeah. And there's no commission when it comes to spirituality. No one's going to, you know, null and void your, you know, retreat requests. You, oh, I'm going to sign up for the 40th retreat. Hey, bro, maybe you should con consider 40 times as it worked. I knew a guy that did 300 something 10 day Goenka things, right? I said, wow, that's incredible. He's done like over 30, 20 years of sitting retreats and he was still an asshole. Couldn't believe it. When's it going to, when's the transformation going to occur? It's probably not. Because no matter the selfing, doesn't matter what you do. It's going to claim you're the doer of it. And if you believe you did yourself into a spiritual condition, you also believe you can do yourself out of a spiritual condition. That is not a spiritual condition that promotes peace of mind. That's another fucking thing of anxiety. You're going to feel like you're going to lose what you did. If I've seen it with people who get in the habit of meditating. It's beautiful. But then they have to do something and they can't do the sitting. They think their whole day is going to be bad unless they go back at lunch and sit there. That's not fucking freedom. I don't feel. That's being, a, that's just bondage to the solution. Yeah. Uh, to me, a solution should free you from the need of the solution. Yeah. This is what non-duality does. It's disarming. Yeah. You're inherently okay. No matter what your head is thinking. Yes. This is not a meritocracy. It's not like you have to convince. And what are you going to be convincing? Something's playing God. You're waiting for it to tell you that you can enjoy the day. It's forecasting everything. It's something playing God. It's like a radio station. Yeah. Plays your golden oldies. You're never going to be loved. Ba, 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 ba. Constantly, okay, sign up for the next fucking thing. Yeah, this is it. Put it down. Or admit you can't put it down because it's not you holding it or putting it down. That's the joy of it. It's completely disarming. Yeah. Zen bit slap, the message has never changed. It's non. There's nothing new in non-duality, 2023. It's the same fucking message. It's a negation of what we're living from without maybe understanding it or knowing it. Yeah. So these understandings of this message bring into stark contrast the misunderstandings. So that which can just live in the weeds will be brought out of the weeds and you'll see it. And if the shoe fits, wear it. Yeah. And you'll know the tree by its fruit. Relief. And it's not a relief that's going to have a consequence like my drug addiction. It's a relief prior to relief and then punishment or whatever it was. Yeah. It's relief from all that. And here we are. That's why. Look at this. Look at what's thrown into this little talk. A beautiful residence. Not even one fountain, three fountains, <laughs> two chimes, fucking gluten-free muffins. Fucking rode an incredible bike path on electric bikes because I couldn't ride with this leg. Fucking what the hell? Yeah. And the ability to enjoy it is the great gift. Yes. The ability to enjoy peace of mind is more important, more important than peace of mind. Peace of mind is available. To enjoy it may not be available. Yeah. 
You don't have to work to enjoy peace of mind. Peace of mind doesn't demand any work. What you are, do you, are you sweating from seeing today? Yeah, hearing, Jesus, I've heard so much, very heavy, weighed down incredibly. No, yeah, there's no weight on the ears. Hearing, seeing, yeah, no thought or effort, yeah, has it been? So why yeah. would you think thought and effort is going to bring you to a place that demonstrates no thought or effort? That's an insane idea, yeah? So this is a very disarming message. I hope the message or understanding gets through. And how it gets through is you go, what? I don't know what the fuck this guy's talking about. Yeah, it's probably, that's a good sign. It is. It's, it's going over my head. That's exactly where we're aiming. The last thing I want you to do is get it. I want to throw it over your head and hit really the real target, which is what you are. Yeah. And I, can, I know I can miss the, this target because you're only six feet. You got maybe a four wing foot wingspan, I can throw it over your head, but I can't miss what I'm aiming at, yeah? I believe you are something that we all are sharing and you are the real hearing of everything. Not the thing that says it's the hearer of it, you. The real hearing of everything hears this message, yeah? Yeah, and hopefully it'll bring you some freaking relief. If not, you come to a beautiful place, yeah? So, and then yeah, any questions today? No, of course not. I had no, I had given up all hope, basically. I had spent really seriously, it was an incredible thing, because in 85, I went into a two-year program called Delancey Street in San Francisco. It was a live-in program. You know, I admitted I, wa I was washed up. But all I really wanted was a place to stay. And they, they said I have to have a, make a two-year commitment. So I ended up staying there for two years because I thrived in that setting. They were a buffet between me and me. It was 300 clients, a lot of people. Uh, and so they were, they were like a living intervention that kept me from me. And some part of me started to thrive. You know, I had friends. I was not... the the desire to get loaded was gone. So in that, that arena, but, and they would be putting out these brochures. They had 98% success rate. That's what they'd say, like, you know, all this, but you had to read the fine print. You could never leave the Lancer street. You would have to live there the rest of your life. And I didn't want to live. I didn't want to be institutionalized, even though I needed it to be, but I didn't think for the rest of my life. So I decided to leave. And I had to enter a four month program of getting an outside job and doing all these things. And I completed it all and I graduated, but it was like walking a plank on a, a pirate boat. There was no bridge. They didn't like AA or nothing. And you were just left with your own devices. I split and I got back into the old habit really quick. I, I was walking with a friend in a park in uh in uh in the city, I moved into this nice little apartment. He saw something, I saw something else who was, was a bent needle. I couldn't get way to get rid of him. I went back, got that bent needle, unbent it, cleaned it up, went to this bar that I used to drink and uh, get drugs from and got some cocaine. I was got into the car, which I lost the next day. Did a line of the coke at that time. And it was like the Jack Nicholson in that movie, The Shining, coming through the bathroom door, the here's Johnny moment. It was just like that. <laughs> that thing that was in me that been dormant woke up when I fed it with a little alcohol and then the Coke. It just woke up and used me for transportation for the next 10 months. And by that time, I was hopeless, really. I had given up hope that I was ever going to get it together. So I was just trying to stay loaded until I went to jail or back to another institution or death, really. And then life decided to step in, thank God. Yeah, I mean, I got run over twice by a car while loaded. That didn't convince me. Tons of shit happened. My mother's love didn't convince me. No human power could change it. 
no human power. The state wanted me to stop. A lot of, and yet something happened. Yeah. And I believe that something is the most important aspect of my life. You don't see it, but you can really feel it and sense it. And it, didn't, it demonstrated something. It stopped this head in its tracks. Couldn't believe it really. And I've never had a strong feeling or urge again, which was mind boggling. That was the greatest solution because there was, there was maintenance needed because I was physical action figure wise fucked up. I mean, my way of looking at things was way off and I needed a way of life to correct some things. But for that to just stop and go another direction was amazing. And never to come back with any force, mind boggling. And to me, what's allowed it to seemingly stabilize a whole lot more is the message of non-duality. That thing that I felt stepped in and, and affected my life, I feel now all day. Yeah, pretty cool. I feel the head also, but the emphasis is on that more than the head. And that's what I believe is needed. If you could just get 50%, 000.1 of interest and attention to be on, let's say the spirit side, you would have great relief from the mental. Yes. Does the mental content fall off? It does. Off? The mental content, it gets more sparse. Yes. And some of its uh, tributaries dry up because the attention and interest isn't going that far anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so it dries up, but do you, is there any format that what changes or doesn't change? I don't think so. I think it could be different for everyone, but there'll be a there's a loss of interest, and that interest goes somewhere else, and you notice what you've lost interest in for sure. Yeah, and so certain things. I remember when I uh, got sober after a month or two, I went back to certain things I used to do like go clubbing and shit because I thought I used to have a lot of fun it was only because I was high on coke because when I got there it was boring as hell you know not being loaded and therefore and then I w went up to this girl at a bar and I tried to be charming yeah like the old days and the words just fell <laughs> before they reached it they just I went excuse me I picked them up and I left the bar so that kind of shit happened yeah I try to reinvigorate something that was dead. Yeah, and so a lot of things. But I don't know, uh, I don't think it's, whatever seems to be necessary will occur, but what the possibility is, isn't, uh, isn't based on the conditions that are met or unmet, yeah? There's peace, it's available at all times. Seemingly you may not be, but it is, yeah? And so, yeah, I found it became much more sparse and the head doesn't dwell much at all in past or future. And so when it's appearing, it's more of like a comedic show that I unfortunately play on Amelia and whoever I'm with, Maria, and now Hamid are at the effect of it. But I just have skits all day. That's funny to me, the head. Because the head, the head is never going to see clearly. It sees, it's programmed. And the, what we're trying to get across, hopefully, is that which is defeating you is mechanical. There's not a choice in you that's going that way. It's something, it's through ignorance or unsuspectedness that something is, is, uh, is defeating us. It's not you. You're not fucking yourself up. Something else like a foreign pathogen is talking to you as you, and it's leading you to get fucked up. Yeah, seriously. This idea of choice is a stubborn ghost that hovers everywhere. Yeah, and this is what flips a lot of people out. First of all, they believe that they were the doer of a lot of the shit. And so when they believe they've completely changed, they expect that to change. And they're surprised when the head acts just like the head does, even if you're enlightened or not. Yes, it's surprising only because they thought they were the doer of the head and you're not. The head is mechanical, yeah? It moves to whatever's happening, claims it, and fits it around its narrative, which is you're a long-lasting, independent, separate thing, yeah? And that you're the doer of a lot of shit you have nothing to do with, yeah? And I feel that responsibility makes us quite uncomfortable, and then we're looking to dump blame and everything else on people. Oh, I thought you did. And we're just not traveling. Can you hear me in there? 
Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it just causes, to me, the the way someone looks who's entertaining these ideas is just a traveling lighter. It doesn't mean like your life changes or the circumstances that are going to meet you in this life, but you're going to travel lighter through whatever happens, yes? And that means you're just not fucking interested in shit that you don't need to be interested in quite a lot, yeah? So when people start talking about the 11 dimensional, I could care less. You know? Uh, you know, we're at the event horizon of absolute voidness. I don't care. Yeah, I want to get a coffee after this talk. That's what I'm, my targets are very low and I can be successful quite a lot. I'm not trying to transcend an imaginary place. I'm not, I'm not trying to, this cannot get supremely better. This is a this is a manufactured condition from the factory. It can only reach a certain height. It, it's not a chariot of the gods. I remember there was a guy, and I'm taking his, I don't know, I'm, this is hearsay, but he professed to be the complete embodiment of the non, of the of the nothing as a something. In other words, he was the living embodiment of unembodiment. <laughs> You know what I mean? So he was the first person to become a body as the non-body, so to speak. Yeah, oh, far out. Then he seemed to have a sudden heart attack and died without knowing it. it there was no festival for his death. He just dropped dead. You would think if he was the embodiment, he would have known he was going to pass away. Right? You know what I mean? I think the head goes crazy. Yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be there to get the joy. Yeah. The great surfer isn't in the wave. It's when you get on the beach. Then the idea of being the great surfer arises. When you're in the wave, you're just in the wave. You're just ing, I-N-G. You're inging. There's no, it's when you get out, you go, did anyone see me catch that wave? It's like, it's always this fucking thing. Yeah. So there, there's a simple example because you've been in a real active, let's say if you were going down the American river in the rapids, yes. And then you you step out and you touch your hair even more. Oh, that was a rough, you know, ride. <laughs> so you can have a big thing at the bar, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's there's nothing right or wrong with it, but it's a transfer from verb to now. Yeah. And through that transfer, there's a lot of a lot of the verbing is lost. And you get stuck with the noun. And a lot of times for most people, the noun ain't enough. You got to jump off fucking bridges on bungee cords. You got to do fucking shoot coke in the neck to feel alive. You just, this is not because you feel you like you're out to lunch, basically. And you are in a way. Yeah. This is something is displacing us. Yeah. Before you know it, it's already knows it. It has a story about it. Yeah. So you can see this because you are awareness. We all are. And you can be aware of the mental activity. You can. You can see the manufacturing of consent that the head is doing and see exactly how the head projects you as an image, this. And all the while not being this, you can see the manufacturing of this. Yeah. But when you see it, you won't, you'll be, you will lose interest in looking from it. Most of us are just completely looking from it. We think we're a cause and we're looking from an effect. The mental state has caused the verb to take itself to be a noun, seemingly. We're starting from there, thinking we're the cause, but we're an effect at that point. So this is just non-duality, not two, not subject object. Yeah, I don't know what you are. You'll find out, yeah. You're not going to get it uh, like a police composite drawing. You're not going to get, oh, you're six, seven, and you. Statistics, no. You're going to get a feeling of what living is really like. There is an I am that they speak of, which is the source or the, like the, the coal of existence in all of us. The I am. What happens with the head, the I am, re re the head reacted to the I am and called it Paul. So now the I am fuels the whole story of what you're not. It's great, greatest verification of itself is based on what you really are. 
it's claimed the I am. When you're feeling I am, it says you're feeling I am Paul. This is how Paul feels. No, it fucking isn't. Yeah. So. And it, the point is, is the relief. If you keep trying to get relief as you, you sooner or later are going to come to a conclusion. You need you need relief from you. It's just going to because it's going to fail. What can a failed system show you? It's failed. Yeah. If you're on your 30th master, something has failed. Yeah. And it will that will be your greatest success when you realize no one's going to save you far out. Yeah. Because there's no one to be saved. You're it. This is going to come and go. This is like a dreaming. Yeah? Just like I had a dreaming last night. If I stayed in that dreaming, it would have been as real as real can be. But I had a I had an awakening called the morning. What we're missing here, we in the day in the daydreaming, in the awake dreaming, we don't have a morning. It can just go on and on and on and on and on. And then we compare it to what we we can't see it as the night dream because it feels different, but it's just another form of dreaming, the daydream. Yeah? Yeah. So it's a simple message. Whatever you're doing, it doesn't, you know, hopefully it helps you. Yeah, really. But if uh, if you see whatever you're doing is is ends up as a doer of it, then that's going to be a bondage of self. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you think so or not. It's a bondage of self. You're bound by the doing with the picture of being the doer. Yeah. And suddenly it's sort of like a hammer sees everything as a nail. If you're looking from the idea of being the doer concerning your own spiritual condition, you'll think you'll have to do a lot of shit to get there, obviously, because the doer can only think about doing something. Yes. If you're relying on that to be your GPS, it's going to have a lot of work in store. This is just a disarming message. At least you'll be able to enjoy today. And then every day, really, you'll be here completely sleeping or awake. You're here when the head says you're not here. You're here when the head says you're really here. You're just here. Yeah. The bed, you know, the gymnastics, the trampoline, the ping pong table is going on, but you're the space of all that. You're not, you don't have a dog in the hunt, really. You're just watching all the dogs in the hunt. Yeah. And it get it stabilizes. It was already stable. Yeah. I am as if it has, if it's unstable, you're past, you're gone. <laughs> the I am is stable until it isn't seemingly. Yeah. The day of your transition or death. Yeah, the I am is the most stable activity, you know, thing here. You can rely on it. Yeah. 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 So when you're re relying on something that's not reliable, what does it demonstrate? Anxiety. You're concerning, you're afraid of the results because you've had a lot of them and they haven't been good. So <laughs> this is finally... You find yourself in a reliant position, but now what you're relying on seems reliable. Yeah. And then more and more it becomes seems reliable. And now you have an assurance that you're okay, not based on meritocracy or anything like that, just on the fundamental condition of what you're not. Yeah. Yeah. So people, for some people, when I watch them, it looks like they give themselves permission finally, because there's a lot of withholding. And then suddenly they just fucking let the ghost off. You know, they just they fuck it. Like this one lady I was talking in Mexico and she's been a spiritual seeker. And every time she went anywhere, even if she didn't want to stay, she had to stay. Yeah. So you never leave a, a meeting or anything. So this Saturday I'm talking and I'm saying, fuck all this. And so she left. And then Monday we did a talk and she came and she sat there. And I mean, she was really there because she came. Because she had now given herself permission to leave. It was great, yeah. So she sat there 
and uh, uh, it was her whole facial structure changed from, from the Saturday to the Monday. And as we were driving by, she was sort of like skipping down the street because she was let off that spiritual hook of having to do, I've got to do. Uh, she was finally relieved of the fucking need to be liberated, basically. It was great. Yeah. yeah. This is what I hope it affects you as some, somewhere down the road. Yeah. Just that not using every moment as a building block to a bigger, better moment, but just here, you know, give it, give the moment what it deserves, your attention and interest, like the sounds and everything. Yeah. The head wants to have you completely like with blinders on focused and moving all the time where you can't smell the roses and shit. Yeah. Your, your attention and interest is to get to a better, bigger place where it's like a form of slavery after you've been relieved of it. You just see it as slavery. Now you're here, completely here. Yeah. Like all every day, all the time. You don't give the power that it doesn't have. You can't be out of a moment. This whole idea that you're out of the moment is an insane idea. And then reacting to it as if it's true, trying to get into the moment is even a more insane idea. Yeah, because who's going to tell you, are you in the moment or how much are you in the moment? You're only 50 percent in the moment, 70, like a little gauge in the moment, out of the moment. You've never been out of any moment. Ever. It's impossible. Yeah. So what we are with this head's direction, we're trying to get out of what we're not in. And we're trying to get into what we're not out of. So we're trying to get into the moment when we've never been out of the moment. So basically, it's wanting you to get into the moment is a way of denying yeah, that you're in the moment. Yes, because it's saying you're out of the moment, basically. When it says, I really want to be in the moment, it's actually affirming this insane idea you're out of the moment. Yes? You see it? It's like slavery. And the same thing. We believe we're in self, we are that, and we want to get out of it. You're not. If you really want the description of it, self is another ing. It's called selfing. Yeah. But this selfing, when it goes on and when it presents itself to you, it says there's a self. So when you listen to the selfing, you, as the great dreaming, manufacture or make up the image that's called self. And now this image says it's the one that was doing all the selfing. Do you see it? It's insane. It's like a double getting fucked double. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The selfing implies a self, which is a historical one. It doesn't say, oh, you're just a self right the second. It says you've always been a self. Yeah? The only way out is to, is going to be through self. Yeah? So you've always been a self. So there's selfing, which is the head saying, uh, I'm going to do this. I shouldn't have done that, whatever, whatever. And then there's the implication. It's sort of like it presents to the audience, which is us, and it's looking for consent, manufacturing consent. Hey, and then there's immediately self appears, and then it's presupposed. And now you think you've been selfing all this time. You think you're the one that sowed the seeds of your own demise. That you chose to go through all this fucking shit. You had no fucking choice. You've been used for transportation. Something took over the controls and is talking to you as you and driving you off a cliff. And not only that, it has you bitching about and having to take all the shit and guilt. Who would drive themselves off a cliff? You. It's just, it just, this is what, why you can see it. It almost plays its hand. It's going to fucking dump on you and then dump a few more times. It's not only going to stick you, you know, kick you once in the stomach. It's going to give you about five more. You're going to see it. You are, because it always overplays its hand. It always does. It will say, it's not over. It's not only that you're the doer, you're the non-doer. You should have done something you didn't do. <laughs> So even though it doesn't even give you relief as not do, you know, nothing happened. It says you should have been doing something that didn't happen. <laughs> you, 
it just it just gets you. It's like a porno theater. You get fucked every which way. Yeah. You're the star. That's what keeps bringing you back to that fucking theater. It's all about you. The juju bees are old. Popcorn is stale. We used to tell a story about, all right, we're going to have a little rent a movie theater. And we're, the, the marquee is going to go uh, Life of Paul. So, of course, like 40 Pauls come with the hope that it's about them and a few uh, ex-girlfriends of Pauls who have some fucking resentments. So they go into the movie theater. You know it's about you. So they're all excited. And so they're eating the stale juju bees and the terrible popcorn. Suddenly they realize it's not about them. They all fucking get up and walk. I'm sitting there. But look, <laughs> you know, all about me. You don't see it. It's not the movie. It's that you're the star of it. That's the ideation. The head is addicted. Some lady, some guy told me this lady said, uh, some Buddhist lady, I disagree with a little. She says, what everyone is, is addicted uh, to get relief from suffering. I don't think that. I said that the real mental addiction is the idea of being a self. I think the mental state is addicted with the idea of being the doer, the thinker, the feeler. I do. I think that's the original addiction that spawns all the other searches for relief from that, which are called the other addictions like alcoholism and drug addiction, shopping, all most of it. I think we're all trying to get out of self as self. Yeah. So the the wanting to get out reinforces and makes the in bigger. That's duality. See, you got to have that understanding. You're wanting to get out of something is giving a great meaning to it. Yeah. So when you're trying to get out, you've made something really big called the in. Yeah. This is the beauty about this message. You'll see that you can't escape from an imaginary place. But how long would it take to get out of where you're not? No time at all. There'd be nothing to do. This is the message of non-duality. It's negating the reality that's been given to something that's not real. That's all it is. It's That's the only paper it's checking at the border. It doesn't care your virtues, your spiritual resume. It just wants to see the picture of the passport yeah, and disqualify you, Paul, entry. Yeah. And when it, it will keep disqualifying you, and then you'll be so fucking pissed off. And once it'll finally truly read you your rights and you're a citizen of that place you want to try to enter. You're already, a, that's where you're from. Yeah. We have a little thing. We'll use it and then we can have question or, run, or go. <laughs> we have a thing called knocking on heaven's door. It's another way of picturing something. So here's this guy, Paul. He's worked really hard, has a good spiritual resume, been in three continents, got a nice, I've been with a lot of people, sat with them. So I go to, I hear where, you know, I'm lucky, I'm a chosen one, I get the address of heaven's door. So I go there armed with this, I got nice robes, looking pretty good, loving gaze, monotone. Knock on the door, door swings open super fast. Like uh, like it. God was right at the door, you know, because there's no time, obviously, in heaven. So I knock on the door. So I, here is God and my prepared speech. I forgot. So I go, God, can I come in? And God looks at me and goes, Paul can't come in. So I walk away and I practice harder. I meditate longer. Go to Wim Hof. So meditation, fucking Wim Hof shit, you know, everything hyperventilating, huggins, sewing, croquettes, whatever, whatever I can do. Feel pretty confident I can get in. Knock on the door. There's the door swings open. Very off-putting. I, I look at him. God looks at me. I go, God, can I come in? He goes, Paul can't come in. So now I'm really bummed out. I say, fuck this. And I go start partying, get loaded, fornicating with different people. And I'm out there just forgetting all this shit. And I fall, I get drunk and I fall into the river, knock my head and I get washed up near the heaven's door. Get washed up and as I get up, something happens. I wake, go to the door, I knock on it. I'm not surprised now, God's right there. 
And I go, God, can I come in? And God goes, Paul can't come in. And I walk right in. Yep. He was never saying I can't come in. He was saying Paul can't come in. So the identity, the identification as Paul is a disqualification of my rightful right to be in heaven, let's say. Yeah. As long as he was, he was just telling me the truth. Paul can't come in. It would have said the same thing to Steve. Steve can't come in. Yeah. When I realized I wasn't Paul, I ended right then and there. Why wait? You know, why wait to get whacked anymore? What you're doing, if it's not working now, is probably not going to work. Yeah. Just like I had a thing, there was a Buddhist magazine I used to get subscription from, Tricycle, beautiful, really nice. Uh, stories essays and they had one with a an opinion piece from a famous western meditation teacher i don't remember the name and he was talking about this phenomena he was having with a lot of his old students and that was they were getting in touch with them and said nothing's happened so i was there i just pulled the fucking emergency brake on the spiritual bus to cancel my subscription to fucking tricycle these people have been at it for 25 years they've just reported nothing's happened i'm jumping ship that's it i can learn from others yeah do i want to sit for 25 years and realize nothing's happened i'd rather realize it through them sitting for 25 years jump ship and then i'll tell you something that may occur and i bet you you'll run into non-duality you will you'll run into a possibility that will suit exactly right where you are right now. And it will be time and that little portal will be wide open and just hear what's said and then see what happens. And it may end up being the last answer. And a lot of that unrest will be put to rest. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, that which needs to be liberated is not you. You are the liberation already. You and I are awake. We're dreaming as if we're not, but we are awake. The demonstration of seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, and touching with no effort or thought is a pretty obvious demonstration. There's awakeness, yeah? That doesn't seem to have an on and off switch, at least near us. I mean, it seems completely involuntary, doesn't it? Can you imagine if you had to write the schematics of seeing? You know what I mean? That you, all right. For me to see, I'm going to have to know how I see. <laughs> be fucking, it's above our pay scale, isn't it? Yeah. So seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, that's what, what is that that's expressing that way is awakeness. We're the seed of awakeness right now. Yet in this dreaming, which is based on seemingly so, in other words, something can appear to be true that isn't. Yeah. Yeah. So Things can appear to be true or false to us. We're the arbiter, okay? So now, many of us on this awakeness are acting as if we're not awake. So we're living as if we're not awake and we're pursuing to become awake, yeah? And then there's some of us who are living as if they're awake, yeah? But the fact is, we're awake. So either you're, you're acting as if you're not awake, doesn't change the awakeness, or you're acting as if you are awake, which doesn't change the awakeness, but it allows a much more uh, unscrambled frequency, yeah? Because there's awakeness and, and awake. <laughs> there's not awakeness with a lot of resistance, which is seemingly not awake, because what really the head is doing is resisting the awakeness most of the time, yeah? It's, it's wants that light at two in the morning to be moved away from the thoughts. But the light is awakeness, yeah? You're just awake to thoughts. And because there's an idea that you're the thinker, the thoughts can drive you crazy. But what's bringing the thoughts into the light is not the thoughts, it's light, us, yeah? We are the, the light that things appear in. So most people really don't want to be awake. They don't. If you could give up that which that doesn't want to be awake, if you stop calling it you, you may find out you're awake. Yeah. And now you're awake 
to being awake pretty good <laughs> instead of being asleep to being awake with the hopes of being awake yeah which is reinforcing that you're asleep well yeah so you're reinforcing the idea that the awakeness is entertaining that it's asleep and it may be a long time before the idea the awakeness gets over that idea or you could just see you're not that that's holding that idea and you'll find out you're awake right now it's not going to look like what you thought you're probably not going to have a parade in nevada city for you today i don't know maybe i don't think so you know you you may not have a gilded hem on your robe it may be you may be on number four in line at 7-eleven no one's probably going to notice your incredible aqua blue stare you're just going to be fucking walking around having a great old little day and if you want to act you if my girlfriend sees me trying to leave the house to save the world she stops me <laughs> yeah the world doesn't need your saving paul just fucking you know swim in your little pond yeah so it's just a message yeah, there you go if you have any questions i'm happy to try to answer yeah anyone there yep <laughs> brian they were paused that was good oh you have someone brian Mike all right e and brian yeah all right yeah That's... hey paul hello uh let me see if i can remember my question I hope uh that. Yeah, me too. Um, we can move on as if you did. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't you say then? I mean, when you when you were talking about uh, the the transportation used as addiction, or or specifically the head using uh, uh, alcoholism and whatnot. Uh, uh, to make uh, the feeler and the doer uh, is not is not chronic pain, chronic disease. Just it's the exact same thing. Yes. Well, it's not the exact same thing, but the suffering concerning chronic pain is sort of similar. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it, it, again, it's. Is it not like a, a, a transportation that's just happening? Oh, of uh, course. That, 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 we're, that, that we're not doing, yes. then, then, then the head comes along and completely uses it yes. uh, to make the doer, to it's make a, us feel guilty. It's, it's, airtight case, really. it's airtight case, usually has the basis of pain as, as the main platform. Physical pain is a great convincer. Yes. Because if I'm not this, why would I, how would I feel this bad if I'm not a body? Yeah, but that's the body trying to imagine not being a body. Yeah. So this message isn't about, it may not take away chronic pain, but it will diminish the chronic suffering that's going along with it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, there's so many stories. You can see it. The one story I loved was one of my first like mentors in AA was a guy named Cy P. And he got caught in a garage, his garage and uh, some gasoline he had in there for his lawnmower just combusted with the heat or something. And he had like 80% of his body had third degree burns. So he was in the hospital and he was feeling fucking obviously very demoralized it was terrible and then this nurse came in and wanted to know if he would talk to somebody and he felt like a great imposition don't you see i'm in tons of pain will you stop this and and she says well i think he's an alcoholic and he, he may need he may he could use your help and so he overrode that and he asked the the guy came in and they talked for like an hour or so and after the guy left, he realized he hadn't felt the pain for that hour. Mm -hmm. So he called a nurse and he says, go get every fucking alcoholic and addict you can and bring them <laughs> here to the hospital because it worked. He lost he, his interest attention, left that 
pain and went into the service aspect of it or that event, and it was more available to what was happening other than that fixation. And so he knew it. it was a beautiful example. And this happened all the time. When I first get started talking in AA, like 32 years ago, I would have a this meeting I did for like 16 years and on a Monday night. And so there was a lot of Monday nights, like 600 Monday nights or something. And a lot of those Monday nights, I felt terrible. Like I remember when I first was doing it back then, if for you to find out you had AIDS, it took three weeks. So I got sober and I realized I got to be responsible. I can't be fooling around with people without knowing what I'm passing on, maybe. So I went and got the test and I had to wait three weeks. So one, maybe the, I just did that and I'm, I'm supposed to do this talk Monday night. Maybe the next time fairy princess left me. Yeah, maybe I have no money. Maybe sinus, sinus infections. But it didn't matter. Whatever condition I was in, all I needed to do was be there and then something came through. And when it came through, I forgot all my other conditions, my circumstantial ones, my physical ones, my emotional ones. In that hour of this something moving through me, I had lost all the interest and attention that was going to those places was not there. It was up into this whatever. Never failed. I, I mean, I went through years of demonstration of that until so it really sunk in. And then I thought, well, this thing that's moving through me I should respond and try to become more like it. And he said, no fucking way. Just keep reading Yankee blogs, going to thrift stores, don't do anything. You're perfect just as you are. And it would just keep coming through. So it had nothing to do with me or my condition for it to use me as something. Nothing, nothing ever. That has, trans that has come with me into non-duality and everything. Your condition has no meaning to the condition. The condition has the ability to outshine all other conditions. Yes, will it or not? I don't know, but it is it possible? Definitely. So I would see it over and over again, every Monday night in different conditions of, of love and everything. It didn't matter, overridden every time for years, years, years. Just, is that just left or does your or does something happen to that? There are leaps that occur. There's a demonstration in your life and that which is demonstrated is so profoundly something else, but you get an image or a, or a inkling to this hugeness from that demonstration. So the mind doesn't work on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The mind works in Something happens and then there's leaps. So you realize that something is doing for you what you couldn't do for yourself. And then there's a leap in a new, in a new basis, a new attitude, a new life. Yeah? These are just little st stepping stones as touchstones, satsang. Satsang touches something, there's a feeling, but that feeling generates a knowing of something that can't be known. Yeah. So when you hear, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha, and you hear it as the Buddha, it's unfucking believable When you keep hearing it as Paul, wait a minute, what the fuck? Can't use mind to seek mind. You can't use light to seek light. You can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. When you hear that as mind, light, or Buddha, you cannot believe the leap that happens because it may tell you that's exactly what you have been doing. You are the Buddha. Yeah, that is being used to seek the Buddha by AKA Paul. So what needs to be knocked off? Just see you're not AKA Paul and the Buddha won't be looking for the Buddha. The Buddha will be that which is looking. Yes. And all of your opinions are about Paul are not gonna fucking stick to Buddha not going to stick to big M mind. It's not going to stick to light. There's no sins in light. Yeah. There's no canker sores or fucking wounds that never get healed. There isn't. It's not like you as a thing that did bad things. Forgiveness isn't found through mea culpa. It's found through the idiocracy of believing that you could have done something different than you've done. 
because you were all driven. It's not you're driven only one hour a day or two hours a day. We're basically being driven by things. Hopefully these winds that are driving us, you'll get to know the wind by its effects. You'll see where you're going and then you'll know what that is. Yeah, I've had a tyranny of something. Active addiction is like a possession. Yeah, and being possessed and having sentience, you get to know the possessor, you do. You come to realize a whole lot about that which is taking you over. Yeah, you do. You're not out. You you you're not two levels below a coconut. You you know somebody's in the house. You do, and you know what it's whipping up isn't what you were planning. Yeah. You do, yeah. and now you recognize when something else moves in, which has a whole different tenor. We call it the higher power in recovery. Some people call it the Holy Spirit in Course of Miracles. And you 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 hear this, and now this thing is taking the same life, but completely interpreting it differently than the old tyranny. Yeah. So now you're seeing a new. The seeing was there, but you're seeing a new. Your A B C equals you know this. Therefore, that is broken. It's like this. Therefore, that. It's a different logic starts happening. Yes. And I think you're better suited for the new one. I do. I think, and especially, you don't want to be a six-year-old addict out in the streets. I swear to God, not too many people are going to do what you want to do at the age of 60. Yeah, you're not going to be swinging it at a club. You know, your veins are all going to be dried up. It sounds funny, when my nephew, who's 60 years old, is out there, fucking 60 years old. Just this year, he was at the same rehab he was 20 years ago. The same orbit, same fucking orbit. And there's tons of them, all with different names, but the same orbit. I've seen them, I've been there. On and on and on. You're not going to tell me that's you. It's not. It's a foreign element. And if you want to say it's absolutely a part of you, you better convince something because it believes it's all of you. Yeah, it's not going to let it, oh, I'm just a part of, no, it's all of you. It thinks of you as something it's all. It takes you for a ride. It uses you, yeah. So, it's to me, it's slavery. That's how I felt, man. I felt the preoccupation with yesterday and tomorrow when you're always in now blows my mind. I can't believe it, Yeah. You would think if the thought system was for your better use and the thought system is happening now, it would be more about now, but it's more about yesterday and tomorrow. There's more thoughts about yesterday and tomorrow than now, every day. So the system that we're relying on, the GPS is unreliable. Its agenda is like HAL in 2001. It's not on the, it's not on the human side. It's got a plan, yeah? so. We were talking about it. That's one thing. Past and future, there's not much dwelling there anymore because the thoughts that go there, I don't follow at all. That's mine. It's not interested. There's a the, law, the interest, whatever interest was there has dried up completely in the past and future. So there's thoughts about it and it's mostly comedic. Yeah, I think it's sort of funny to get run over by the same car twice in the same night. It's difficult to do. I mean, you could not, if you try to plan that, you may have gotten hit twice by two cars, but by the same car, it's fucking pretty incredible to come up with. Yeah, on a Sunday night, January 30th, freezing cold. I mean, I was trying to get back to a bar that I had left. I left, there was only two people there. When I got back to where I was staying, my head told me a huge party erupted. I found out later there was still only two people there. And I never made it to the bar. I got hit by a Chevy Monte Carlo. <laughs> Ten months in the hospital bed. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Woke up in a hospital movie being the patient. <laughs> I couldn't move at all. I had no power at all. The doctors never even looked at my face. They just looked at the legs. They just take me out, operate on me. 
I'd figure out something happened by bandage placement, look around, what happened? Oh, we had to do your hip or something. It was just like, there was no, they weren't asking for my consultation. All they didn't, there was like, I would say, hey, there's someone here. It was just, yeah. Does, uh, does urban renewal project narration still happen yet yeah, you're just completely disinterested yeah that's over i mean does the narration still it yeah. mechanically go on yeah they there hasn't been a new paint job in years yeah but the narration still the goes. project i used as an action figure thing back when i grew up they had used to have urban renewal projects where they'd have shitty situations and no tons of money, but a lot of people, a lot of corruption, rip them off and they still have shitty buildings. <laughs> so the urban renewal project, the urban never got renewed. Yeah. So I use that as a, like trying to make the action figure better and better, you know, like more stuff, more this and more that. To me, it got to a point of addiction. Yeah. So to me, getting the message, I'm not that canceled the urban renewal project so the the budget of attention and interest went to other projects which were much more enriching it's going to be like this this is humbly how i feel it yeah i believe there's your mind i believe you know gravity as a force they talk about i think they talk about dark matter as a force i believe faith is a force faith not a faith faith i believe faith is a force that we actually represent. So as Jesus says, as you believe, so it is. And, you know, faith, the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. I believe we are, we represent that force. Faith. And the faith is going to manifest in the vehicle it's put in. And I had an incredible long, long laboratory experiment where I saw faith in action in the thoughts of the head the alcoholic addictive head. I saw shit made out of nothing a lot and I took it completely true. And decisions were based on it that set off circumstances that brought great misfortune to people I knew and myself, yeah? But the starting point, the beginning of the race started up here. A lot of false evidence was appearing real, yeah? The thoughts were not true, but they appeared true to they appeared real to me. I believed that that person was thinking about doing some harm to me when they hadn't thought had a thought about me for weeks. And I would be looking at them suspiciously, thinking they're gonna fuck with me. All this shit. Yes. That was faith. I had faith in the thoughts that about something bad was going to happen next week. And that faith was sufficient that it ruined my Saturday. Yeah. So next week had the ability to ruin my Saturday by faith that came from me. That to me is powerful. I much rather have something else to wreck the faith than the mental state. I'll tell you the truth. Well, I found it by the mental state completely failing. Yeah. And then having to, because of getting incarcerated and ending up in places, having to change almost physically and, um, and mentally because of my surroundings. And then I started seeing other ways that things could be. Yeah. But I saw the demise uh, was faith. Yeah. So faith I believe is going to manifest in your life based on the vehicle it's put in. And most of us, the vehicle it's put in is the head. And I don't believe the head has got a wide enough lens or a, a panoramic view. I think it's myopic and reactive. In my case, it doesn't work. Yeah. It just doesn't have the ability to see that far and it's programmed and the programming can't be overridden. It's not AI, it's a program. And to tell the truth about the program releases a lot. And I felt the attention and interest 
which combined with faith is what produces everything, will now be directed some in other directions, like listening to hummingbirds or, yes, yeah, bringing a, a hat to somebody that was surprised by it, shit like that, yeah? So, and then you know the tree by the fruit. I can't know the tree. Yes, I am the tree. I get to know that by the fruit, yes? I have faith now in something prior to thought. Yeah. So the old CNN news flashes are like Comedy Central satire now. They still play, but they're used completely different than before. They use, they were used to me to do shit that set off a lot of consequences, you know, like shooting up with fucking spit. You're gonna get an abscess, shit like that. And I would do it anyway because I wanted to get a, a, the, the tiniest bit of relief knowing it was, I didn't care. There wasn't any water around and I had to do it. So I spit in the fucking thing and shot the coke. You don't come up with this shit. Something happens. You're driven to these places. But when you're there and if you survive it, there's a knowledge to be known. There's stuff you can extract from that that's very valuable. Because this thing always, over, always overplays its hand always it, there's never enough the more of you it seems to control it's never enough it just keeps on keeping on it just it'll suck the last drop out of it and people won't get killed they a lot of addicts would love to die they're still cooking i moved to, to hate when i first got sober saw a lot of street people 25 years later they're still there they can't kill them they that they don't get sick they're so toxic no virus or flu will enter their bodies. They don't get colds. They're just fucking immune. <laughs> and they're, the, the parasite is like fucking, they don't, doesn't want to lose the host. It's fucking got a great host. Yeah. I'm going to be dead before. No, you're probably not. You're going to be a, like a washed out 50 year old hipster still wearing black all day. It's not going to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. That's how I feel about it. I believe uh, you can tell the direction of the wind. You can't cause the direction of the wind. Yeah, I can observe what's going on, but I'm not the cause of what's going on. Yeah. I would, yeah. To call something else's manifestations yours is going to be a losing position, yeah? If something has taken you over like a parasite and when it manifests through you, you keep calling its manifestations yours, you're basically living in the act of being identified as the parasite, really, yeah? And how the parasite th thinks about itself and how the parasite sees an agenda isn't the way you would actually see it. But now it's fitted around you, no matter how tight or how unfitting it is and you live as it. Yeah. Most people who are getting high today are not having much fun. If you've hit a certain point, it becomes an occupation. The partying is over years and years ago. You're just, you have to fucking change how you feel. Yeah. It's an addiction completely. You're ridden completely. And these are just examples, but the same basis is there. The mental state is claiming your life or this life and making it its life. And you're going to have a dried up life because its life is an interpretation or a narration. It's not a living dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. So anyone else have a question? I have one. Yeah. 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 Brian. Hold on. We have a live one. We're going to take the live one. I know. Is that, is that my, oh, okay. Oh, no. Yeah. We'll be, we're here. Hold on. Yep. No, no, go ahead. No, no, go. Um, Mondu, this concept is new for me, maybe yeah. like the last 18 months. And um, I spend a lot of mental energy around like, why would consciousness want to create the experience of forgetting itself? Because it seems like it's the human condition to be, to feel separate until, until you don't. 
you know, like I'm looking at the yes. bigger picture. I'm like, is that? See, like, but that question comes from the separate, the imagined is. separate. Yes. Yeah. See, that's why. And it's above its pay scale, first mm -hmm. of all. See, I, I had an example of this, this thing. So instead of giving you 800 examples, I had an example of this thing where I figured the body identification had something with blocking off the sunlight of the spirit or something. Yeah. So in the Course of Miracles, something I was introduced to, they had these lessons. And one of the lessons was you sit in a relaxed way and it's like, I'm not a body. I am free because I am just as God created me. Yeah. So I would do it a lot because I thought the problem was a body identification. Now, after a few weeks of doing it, not, I didn't do it for a few weeks, but I did it for a couple of days. A couple of days later, I got the message that the only thing that would chant it's not a body is a body identification. <laughs> so I was going, wait a minute. The body is chanting it's not a body, reinforcing I'm more of the body. <laughs> yeah. So I got caught in the whole vice. That wasn't a phenomena, that was a principle. It was yeah, this is what we try to describe here. You're wishing to get out is really the idea that you're in. Yes. Yeah. Because it's reality that wants to get out. So then the in that reality thought it was in must seem to be real. Yeah. So this is not an unusual thing. It happens a lot. The head wonders why it's it's like the head. <laughs> Yeah. So the the to me the it's starving of the why or starting starving uh the questioner because I think the questioner is the answer really. Yeah. So you are what you're looking for and you are not that which just said asked that question why. That's the head for sure. Yeah. Yeah. This stuff you lose interest in all the In the head, knowing sort of replaces being, yeah? Knowing seems to be, I, I want to know something, yeah? It's already seemingly preoccupied with the idea that it's already being something, which is the body. So it wants to know something, you know? It wants to have an experience of another being, but as this being, yeah? It's persistent, it's stubborn. And so you'll see it say itself a few times, and then there's a, a leap there. And you start recognize it's it's sort of like it thinks it can go through the glass ceiling, so to speak. Yes, its programming is is limited and finite, and the ceiling is there, but it's glass, so it can see through it, and it thinks it can get through. And it's why, why, why? Well, because, yeah, yeah. And if I go to the rabbit hole, like, why do I even need to know the answer to that question? because I'm trying to figure out if this concept is true. Yes. I don't want to believe in the wrong thing, right? <laughs> yes, all those things. Well, that's like, a, that's the, the stem. Let's say it's, it claims the stem and then all the flowers after that are the head. Yeah, you, like the four different things you said that it could be doing. It's the claiming first that you're the hearing of the message. And then that stem, fortifies all these mental bloomings yeah and usually they open up with why why but is a big one but 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 why yes and then uh you know if you've been a horticulturist for years <laughs> you've seen that plant grow thousands of times you don't want to water it you know you don't want to water it light's good for it though sunlight's very good for it but no more no watering yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I would see it. Yeah. Watch, this is the beauty of it. We had it the other day and you just, bit, thank you. You just illustrated something. So here's a message. The message happened, it's happening, right? Something's percolating. And so something arises, which is that aspect of the head. Oh yeah, arises. Yeah. And the way it claims it, it asks why. Why? Yeah. Now, to me, that which was hiding in the weeds just came out. See? So the satsang, the satsang brought it out, and now it's revealing itself. And now 
the, the answer from the satsang is I'm not that. So what you're seeing isn't you. It's something other than you. That's the beauty of it. So now you're seeing the emperor with no clothes. Yeah. And yeah, you got a hit. And after a while, even when the emperor has full regalia, you'll see the emperor with no clothes. Yeah. You'll recognize what's arising to combat or try to say something about the message isn't you. The satsang's bringing the shit out of the weeds. So you get to see it. it. You don't see it when it's under there running everything. Yeah. But this is the beauty of the satsang. The understanding of satsang brings into stark contrast the misunderstandings. So the thing like the turtle head comes out of the shell. Why? Why? And then there you go. It's a beautiful, this, this is the working of satsang. It extracts something that's sitting there. Yeah. And it shows itself. And hopefully you see it finally as not you. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you see it as you, you'll be holding to get its answer. And da, 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 da. It's just like unbelievable. You'll die for the fucking thing to be right about it. When you see it as not you, there's, that's the relief. The relief that that didn't get, that that got relief. It's relief from that. It's relief from that. Just like if you have the, you're going to feed and all the mouths that come up. Only one of them is like the true mouth, yes? The other ones, you don't need to feed. Just see them as not you. Usually all day, they're just sitting under the weeds doing their shit. Here, you hear something, it pulls them up. Take a look, yeah? Because where, what is that which is seeing it? Couldn't you say that which is seeing it is more you than that which is being seen? Obviously. You're the awareness of that which implies you. You're the awareness of it. You are the awareness of that which is implying you. You see the truth of it. You're now becoming free from the bondage to that. Yes, because if you're bound to that, you're going to go to another meeting of another person and ask why and why. And you think you're missing it unless you get your answer. And if it, the one answer doesn't fit, you go to another person to get your answer. And it just stems more, more. No, it showed itself. Here's the, here's the sword of clear understanding. Whack it. I'm sitting here with no head to begin with, hopefully. That's what happens. This is the tool. If you're missing this and... You know, I was at the meeting and I had so many thoughts about what was said. No, you were at the meeting and there were so many thoughts about what was said. You did not have them. Yeah, you not. You did not have one of them. You see it? It just just lazily just just has you the doer of so much shit you have nothing to do with. And it would be fine unless it isn't fine and it doesn't seem to be fine. You're traveling heavier through a day where you don't need to. You're looking everywhere. Just look at your own backpack. You got a lot of heavy weight there. You know, and don't have to take, because it's your backpack, you don't have to take the stones out. It's not your backpack. Take the whole fucking thing off. You'll get another backpack. Don't, I, don't worry. Yeah, you will. You're going to have tons of personalities and shit coming up. Just have a spirit that they're not you, finally. That's the traveling lighter. It, you're not going to change these fucking things. You're not. Therapy is not going to make you a perfect fucking uh, service animal. It isn't. Yeah. Every, like a breed of a dog, they all have their temperament. Yeah? Maybe they're good for a few years, but there's always that fear that that dog is going to fall back to that temperament. Yes. The selfing has a temperament. It doesn't become your amigo or shit like that. It's in a win-lose situation. Parasite host. For the parasite to win, the host got to lose. <laughs> it's not like 50-50. It doesn't work that way. Yes? I've seen it go really far in my own life with addiction. I've seen it. I've seen it go tons of people. 
I've seen people in my family kill themselves based on the head. Yeah, overwhelmed by circumstances, the head just beat them into a submission where they did what would have been seen to be undoable years before. Yeah. And I have, you know, I seen, I can see if there's faith in the thought system, you're apt to do almost anything. Because it's going to, it's, I mean, it works just like we say in AA, surrender. Well, the surrender to the problem is fuck it. It wants to bring you to fuck it. And then you do something and you get tattooed by that. You know, someone goes out. I met a guy in San Quentin who killed someone in a blackout. So he's there the rest of his life and he can't even remember what he did to be there the rest of his life. Can you imagine that? Mind boggling. I did a big talk there. The three people that spoke before me were all in there for vehicular manslaughter. They killed someone while they were drunk driving. Three of them, 12 to 15 years. It's insane. We're lucky as hell. Sometimes something happens, you're tattooed. Yeah, you're tattooed by it. I was tattooed by this. I felt the effect of this physically for 38 years, more than that, 40 something years, every day. Changed body, everything. Yeah, that one night, my head just said, you're missing a big party triggered getting run over by the car the effect has lasted 40 years yeah 40 years that's a pretty good uh payoff for a thought you know a thought that was wanting to compel an action compels an action that leaves a 40-year tattoo that is a successful thought because aren't they trying to break through the membrane and make an action occur they only can break through that membrane through my when it's my thought, you're apt to do almost fucking anything. If you see it as a thought, you probably won't. But if you see it as yours, it can talk you down the staircase of hell. It can. You could do some fucking crazy shit and be left holding the bag. My, my, the power that we represent is not, if it's wielded by fucking unknown hands, it's, cannot, it may not be a good outcome. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, I think that's it. Right. You've got another hand. Oh, we have another hand. Uh huh. Right, one more. Waiting patiently, so for a long time, uh, I think. And and I'll I'll keep it brief. I just wanted to share a chunk of my journey, uh, with the experience that I've had following your teachings and a little bit of the twelve step stuff. If that's okay, Paul. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm Brian, by the way. I don't know if you remember me, Reggae Brian, a few months back. Anyway, glad oh, to yeah, be here. Brian, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, I just wanted to state my claim with it, this experience. Um, and for myself, the, the self has dug me into a spiritual mental condition of emotional dysregulation. And I've been looking for this type of thing for 20 years now because I do want to travel lighter. I'm definitely seeking relief. And it took a coming to believe for me, kind of allowing the experimenting in losing interest and the willingness to be willing to let go, uh, which, you know, came with less identifying and more being. And then the, the being it keeps kind of deepening. So it, it feels like there's something being done to me, like I'm being operated on, which makes willingness easier. But there's also this such convin convincing human evidence with the seemingly real life situation. And I was like, you know, born into trauma. So that kind of amplifies the what seems like reality. But it also seems that this is just the plight of the human condition, which I call the existential paradox. And so now that I'm learning these things, I'm kind of like trying to play spiritual catch up and it's turning me into a seeker. Uh, but I also am like deliberately kind of, I guess, unbecoming. Uh, there's a movement happening. And I don't know if it's deliberate because I don't think I can do it. But I, I think maybe I must, I think I'm a separate self, but maybe I'm God in drag. You know, who's really in recovery? I'm coming to find that the 12 steps are self deflators and slate cleaners. And non-duality seems like it can help keep those things deflated and clean. 
In my experience, steps one, two, and three are the difficult steps, and that's what led me here. Uh, because I was standing in my finite power and I, and I just kind of needed that expanded view to be able to stand outside of myself. And now that I'm standing in that choice of preference, it makes it so much easier. You know, the relief comes a little bit easier now that I know how to loosen the reins a little bit on the self, I guess. So the brief glimpses have given me hope. And I'm pretty sure that's the only hope that's available to me. With everything I've tried in 20 years, this is like the relief I've gotten. So that's where I'm at with my stance. I just wanted to share that. Not not really a question, but I'm sure you can pick at it if you want, Paul. Uh, no, we'll leave it alone. Cool. That's Thank great. You. It's not over. And yeah. Yeah, more will be revealed. More will be revealed. Yeah. The thing is, it's... Maybe duress, you know, that this doesn't meet, need to be a thing for something to be deliberate. So, uh, yeah. Can something you expand on that? It its own momentum and uh, more gets revealed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, bro. Keep uh, report back in in a few months and give us so another report. So so are you saying what I'm thinking has deliberate? Are you saying what I'm thinking might be deliberate is actually that unsuspected resource? Of course it is, yes. Oh, at a boy. The unsuspected resource. Leave it unsuspected to the head. You're, you're gonna know it quite, quite well. You want it to be unsuspected to the head. Yeah? The unsuspected inner resource is incredible when you're not the head. You want it to be completely unsuspected to the head. <laughs> you do. If the head thinks it suspects it, it's gonna claim it and make it into something. And you, then you may be a spiritual seeker for 50 years, yeah? If you keep it unsuspected, this, this, whole, uh, this whole rebirth may only be a few months. <laughs> you wanna keep the head unsuspecting the inner resource <laughs> i mean very very much make it let it be oblivious to that which is truly going on and then you'll see it's it's true value comes from comedic uh uh gold so to speak you're gonna laugh at yourself it's very nice seriously yeah 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 thank you brian the unsuspected inner resource. Don't tell anyone where the lake is. Yeah, don't give them the longitude and latitude. The head will be claiming it like that. Yes? Yeah. Let the head think it's it's the captain as you go to different ports. It's great. You'll have to keep changing its story. <laughs> I thought, I, where's, we're on the way to Cuba and you end up in Fiji. Oh. Oh, I meant Fiji, you know, let it do. You'll, you'll have a blast and you'll see you're being directed by a different wind. Let it have all the fucking blowhard wind it wants, but it's not, it's not moving the sails anymore. So let it be an unsuspected inner resource to our, yes. The true, our true nature should be always an unsuspected inner resource to the head. Yes, yes, I'm serious. Let the head think it's the outer resource. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the unsuspected resource is realized through experience, not through a mental identification. I believe so. More experience and observation and expression. But not mental observation. No, no. The mental observation. Well, the, there is a mental observation, but it's been it's been drenched in like spiritual jelly, so to speak. Yeah. So it's not papyrus. It's got some sense feltness in it. Yeah. So there is a mental uh, expression of it, but that mental is is when it's being put to good use. Yes. More yeah, of like an. It doesn't get it, but it the head can try to express it, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? See, thy head things happen, and then the head tries to express it in a way it can. 
which is usually it tries to pick a, an image, paint or something or like that. When the head is just reeling off its fucking tape loop, it's very empty, yes? Like, uh, like, uh, uh, like paper that got too rough. It's too, you know, there's no give in it, yeah? It's just papery. It doesn't have any feeling. But when you try to, when you've been under the influence of something, and then you attempt to try to capture it in words, it's almost like an artistic endeavor. Yeah. You can't put word to it, but you're compelled to try to put words around it. Yeah. Yeah. This is like what we do here, satsang. It's like, it's like uh, verbal jazz, really. Yeah. There's a note we're trying to, or there's a theme and we're trying to imply a connection to all the notes and go off and then keep coming to back to the same theme. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a, a 30 album comp compilation of a love Supreme by John Coltrane. <laughs> Just goes hours, years and years of the same talk. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. People may hate it, but then it hits on, hits them later or something or whatever. I have faith in the message. I've seen it transfer and change this, and I've seen it change others. And uh, I've seen people try to get get up in arms to this message, and we just keep disarming them. Just keep taking, put the rifles down. Da, 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 da. Don't shoot at the unsuspected inner resource. Just calm down. <laughs> no, just, you know, and uh, yeah. While it think it's running the operation, something else is running the operation. Yes, let it have its little story. Something else is running the operation, as always. But now, yeah, you're at the effect of that more than the effect of the, the little pantomime going. Yeah, yeah. It's all based on interest and attention. You got to admit, there's a lot of interest and attention in your head, more so than anyone else has in your head yeah. and you. And that interest and attention has gone to a point where it's probably not serving us well. It needs to be distracted. And what better way than to see it's not about you, the head, yeah? Or you're not the you that it's about, let's say. You'll lose interest in it. And then you're gonna gain interest in life and you're gonna be expressing and observing it. And I think it's a much more fulfilling, richer way to go if you're gonna have to go. You know, we, we're on some kind of a time space path where we're going to come to a date of termination. Yeah. You might as well smell the roses and shit. Yeah. I got no time for that. Well, yeah. See that you're not that that says that and you'll smell the roses. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. So, hey, I think we're going to end. I have an agenda that's slowly disappearing for the rest of the day. Is that all right, Mike? Mike? Or did we leave yeah, Mike? Yeah, I'm, I was nearby. I yes. think we're gonna we're gonna say goodbye, eh? Bye. <laughs> I'm gonna say goodbye to everyone I can. Brian, nice to hear you. Keep report back every once in a while, eh? Thank you for your service, Paul. And please keep your fire, brother. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. I'm cooked. Mike, nice to see you, bro. Everyone says hello. Amelia, everybody. Have a good night. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Mike Clark, nice to see you. Vlad, we were, we were playing your song. Thank you, thank you, thank you before the talk, Vlad. We're going to use it in uh, Sicily. No, he's Siberian. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. We got Sherry. We got Mike from LA. Nice to see you, Mike, coming around. Right yeah. on. Yep. We have Johannes, Germany, David. Nice to see you, David. Jessica. Hey, we're going to be in uh, Hudson, in Hudson, New York, in, uh, in June, uh, I think the 14th of June. It's on the website if you're interested. We'll be there. Oh, you're Northwest England. I thought it was you were New England. <laughs> well, I hope to run into you sometime, Jessica. Yeah. Roman. We got Holly. Tariq. Remember, Tariq. 
I'm coming there the 11th, so get out of Dover. Dennis, Minnesota, Esther, hope you do, everyone's doing well. Marty, Ilan, Mike C, Alex, Peter. Oh, there's Peter. Nice to see you, Peter. Oh, uh, Jane. Peter, are you, where are you from again? Australia. Oh, Australia. All right. Yeah. I thought I mixed you up with someone from Romania. I have some Romanians. <laughs> All right. We got Jane G. Melville. Oh, Angie, my uh, smiling lady from Canada. Nice to see you, Angie. Zoe, Tommy. I got Alex, I think. Uh, let me see. I can't see anything on here. I hope if I didn't get you, uh, I'm just saying hello and thank you. I'm just a little buzzed out now. I got to get off the, I'm Zooming on Zoom. That's, yeah, I'm Zoomed out of Zoom at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See you guys. Bye-bye. Buzz on. Yeah.